Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the 18th of February. This is Brad Matheny, and this is the Custom Index video. As a reminder, please visit Mint.com. See what I do. See how I can help you. Remember, I'm trying to help you by providing my custom proprietary research and to teach you to make better decisions. Now, part of what I'm trying to do is to get you to rely upon your own decision making your own trading skills and to improve your trading skills by allowing you to access my proprietary research and videos. And I ask that you join the Expert Growth Membership, which is a very inexpensive way of supporting what I'm doing. And again, to help you become better at trading and understanding what to expect in the markets. Reality is you only need three or four good trades a week. That's it. And you can end up doubling or tripling your account every month if you're trading futures or options. If you're trading stocks and are more conservative and want to just trade uh, to target 15, 20, 25% a year, then a combination of my TT scanner hot list and my Mint rotational modeling system investment strategy would be ideal. You can uh, run those uh, persistently just by following my research, understanding risk on, risk off in the markets, and understanding trends that are setting up. Today, we're going to go over all of the custom indexes, but try to pay attention to Mint.com. Come take a look at what I'm doing and figure out how you want to get involved. My job is to teach you what I've learned over the last 25 or 30 years, which is a, a wealth of technical analysis, uh, price theory, and other uh custom adaptive strategies uh, and to try to get you to become a more skilled trader. Uh, one thing I will point out is uh, KD, one of, my, one of my followers, has done an incredible job of uh, working with people and showing us what we can do. He has, uh, this is his last week's total. He's trading options mostly. Beautiful week for him. 711% profits, almost $4,400 in profits last week. And again, this was a fairly choppy week with some big trends and big rotation, big volatility. Uh, he did just wonderfully. And this is an example of what you can do with the right skills. So part of what I did is I created this new uh, charting system in TradingView for members. The idea here is to help you understand uh, market trends and opportunities and how to trade more efficiently. You can see we had a sell signal up here off of this TT3 MACD strategy, which is somewhat proprietary. We had a downward cycle trend here. Uh, we had very strong Donchian downward channels here. We stayed in a downward cycle trend from over here, which is the 16th, the peak over here all the way down through this lower cycle and we ended up getting a base bottom here beautiful little bottom setup uh lovely uh trend setup uh we were just looking for that higher low confirmation right here we got a little bit of a higher low back over here but then it failed downward again set up a new higher low confirmation here and this was the re beginning of the recovery rally up to 107 a little over 10 or 407 on the SPY. Eventually these flipped into bullish near the end of the day. But again, helping you stay out of these trends and know where the opportunity is, is key. Remember, we I teach you to create a plan A and a plan B uh, in your trading strategy. If I'm right, what am I gonna do? And if I'm wrong, what am I gonna do? Okay, let's get into the custom indexes. So first what I'm gonna do is come back over here to the SPY weekly chart. Everything that I have been predicting all the way through the last uh, 12, 18 plus months has really played out perfectly. We've got a very deep low back here in uh, August, uh, sorry, October uh, 2022. This rallied off of a, a very deep low. I'm calling this the end of a wave four correction. I believe we're in the beginning of a wave uh, one upward move. It's very easy to see an A, B, C, actual D, E move here. Very big, beautiful move. This is really wave one. Now we're trying to resolve what we see next. Is this gonna be a wave two move, followed by a wave three move, followed by a wave four move, followed by a wave five move out here? 
or are we looking at this being one, two, three, four, five, wave one, wave two down, and then this becomes wave three, which is now setting up as a one, two, so this is an ABC move. Could we see a deeper correction or are we gonna see this extend all the way up into a broad cycle trend uh, out through 2023 and 2024? So it depends on how this resolves. Remember Elliott Wave, for those of you who are not familiar, Elliott Wave is one of these, what I call hindsight tools. Um, it can help you kind of understand where we are right now, but in reality, you don't know where the ultimate peaks and bottoms are gonna be until the wave actually completes and rolls over and forms a new wave one and wave two in the opposite direction. And that's really the reality of Elliott Wave, is that yeah, you can guess at where the, the markets are gonna go based on structures and waveforms, but we really don't know ultimately how far and where things are gonna go off of Elliott Wave until the wave completes, rolls over, starts a wave one, and then a new wave two, which is the corrective wave, uh, to be able to tell us that, okay, now we have at least some confirmation that we may be ending a structure and beginning a new structure. So in this regard, I'm leaving this base as the ultimate low as critical, okay? We do not know where we're at in the broader scope of things. We do know that we are apexing just like my cycle patterns have set up. We are forming a flag formation and the uh, February 20th next week generally should be the apex and then we should move into a post apex around the 27th of February, which means that I believe we are going to resolve to the upside again. The upside bias is still fairly strong unless something comes to disrupt it. I believe we're gonna have a rally from around the 24th, 25th, 26th, up into the middle, uh, sorry, end of March, middle of April in this area. I believe we're gonna find some weakness and possibly a rounded top over in this area, which would be say March 27th through April 15th or so. And then we're gonna roll over and move into an extended downturn. Now I've drawn it fairly deep, but in reality, ladies and gentlemen, it may not be this deep. Let me show you. So without my server, So without getting into too much detail, I've drawn this as a fairly deep retracement down into this apexing formation here, if it were to happen. Understand that if we were to roll into a downtrend and bottom in this area, rolling upward into like this, then the actual apexing formation, this low would become irrelevant and where we would be is we would be coming from possibly these lows across to these areas here. And I would have to move this a little higher, possibly about like this. So understand that where we're at with this is trying to get you to see it is we could see a deep, deep low here take place back in uh, maybe uh, uh, July, August, September, really more so in this uh, July, August area. But in reality, where this low sets up, we don't really know. I'm drawing this alternate low here because I believe this would be a sufficient um, downturn. Remember, visually, I see structure and price. I've been doing this long enough now that I can almost guarantee you that this, from this move here to here, I would bet you that this would be a, a, a 382 correction, and I would bet you that this would be just below a 50% correction, probably right in here would be a 50% correction, uh, which would be ideally Fibonacci pullback areas. So what I'm drawing is really Fibonacci structure, and this is again because I've seen price move over 25 plus years in shapes and formations that are fairly realistic, and I can kind of draw them out ahead of time, which is what helps me see what is coming. But again, we're in a presidential election, an early presidential election year cycle. So I want to preface the, the whole idea here is that we're, I'm not expecting 
a whole lot of upward biasing until maybe the end of this year, maybe a, a slight Christmas rally, maybe uh, uh, aligning with a Fed pause uh, after uh, inflation cools off a bit more, maybe watching the real estate market collapse uh, out of these uh, pricing apexes, let's say, where I think we're at right now. I'll show you that in the real estate video. Uh, but long and short of it, where we're at in this move is how do we resolve in this area? Well, this is where we're at right now. And again, if we count this as wave one, then we're going to have a broader wave three. So here we go to wave one. I will try to modify this. Make it a bright color and super thick. If that is wave one, then we would expect wave two, or sorry, three, if I go to these lows, to end somewhere up in this 435 area, which is where I've drawn this area. This is from the lows here. Now, if we were to take a look at this from, let's call it price support, which is not the lows, but the middle of these dojis down here, right here, then we would be looking at 445. <clears throat> and again, that aligns back up here with another line that I've drawn. Uh, but again, this is where we need to understand. This would be a minimum move for a wave uh, three. So understand that wave three must be larger than wave one by Elliott wave structure. So if we take a look at this and we realize that we have an A, B potential correction, then C must be larger than A. That means that this must be much bigger, possibly 1.618 or 1.38. So in the reality, ladies and gentlemen, the long-term structure of wave C must be bigger than wave one. It has to be based on Fibonacci or sorry, Elliott wave structure. And that would mean that ultimately we could see a much longer wave cycle take place unless we have an alternate count. As I mentioned to you earlier, if we assume this is A, B, C, then this area up in this 440, 450 area becomes our primary target. If we are looking at a sideways correction, if we count this as A, B, C, D, E, wave one completed, five waves, wave two pullback. Now we're in the midst of a complex wave three. We could see wave three, which must be bigger than uh, wave one. We could see wave three move from this area to this peak, roll back over into a consolidation, into a potential flagging extended phase, and then move into a broader, deeper phase. Let me move this over here, potentially, or over here near the apex. And this would put us into a broad expansion phase. Get my server to respond here. A broader expansion phase up into the 490 area okay kind of right over here I'm trying to get my there we go so understand that if this is a complex wave structure we could look at this as a completed wave oh, now look it's moving all over the place we could look at this as a wave one complete wave two pullback all right, let's see if I can. <laughs> Gotta love the fact that my server is acting slow. Let's see how much memory I have in use. No, it's not so bad. It's just reacting slow. Okay, there we go. So we got a wave one completed five wave, wave two pullback, 
we could see a wave A, B setting up over here with a flag, and then C up to here, and then D, and then E continuing higher. And that would be wave three, not a completed wave, not a peak. That would just be a very large complex wave three. So where we're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is get back over here. Move this up a bit. What we're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is right here. What's next? What's next is this apex right here. Spread it apart. Drag this back over here. And this is generally the next five, six months of trading that I expect. Apex, volatility, potential move into the 402, 404 area, which we saw on Friday. Um, potential massive volatility spike resolving to the upside, moving up to the 430 to 435 area by, say, uh, end of March, early April, rolling down into a complex wave structure or sideways trend, which I believe will continue to stay in a wave three formation to the upside, may continue to weaken as we move into this sideways channel, and then eventually back over in this area, July, August, September, we should be resolving to the upside. Okay, it all depends on what happens next with this cycle. So we need to see how this rotation plays out over the next four, five, six months to be able to determine where the real bottom is. My analysis right now says the July time frame, uh, July, August, September is an excellent bottom opportunity in 2023 for an end of year rally phase. But again, we need to see this play out. Okay, I've taken 16 minutes discussing all of this. I wanted to try to be a little a little quicker about this, but let's go through the uh, the custom indexes here. Core commodity index is weak and downward, very solid for deflationary cycle trending. This is just what the, the Fed wants to see. We want to see this continue to stay in a downward cycle, trending, say, below 6 or 7 or 8 would be ideal for... Uh, uh, the Fed to move into some sort of a, a halting or pausing type of scenario near the end of this year. The accumulation phase index is stalling out. You can see the SPY up here stalled back out. This is ideal based on uh, what I've been talking about, waiting for the markets to stall. We're seeing this same type of scenario here. Remember, I believe we're going to resolve to the upside, a little bit more to the upside, 7 8% maybe in the SPY to the upside, that will prompt the accumulation phase to the downward move. You can see we're getting this rollover and trend here. I think that's going to come in March. I think March is going to be a pretty solid upward trending cycle for the SPY and U.S. stocks. A bit more of a reflation. Nothing huge, uh, but probably 6 7 8%, maybe a little bit more. The custom cash flow index stalled, just like I indicated it would. We got up into this upper channel. And historically, you know, these have been kind of peaky. Uh, so think of these as excess peak rotations and we need to stay down in this lower channel. I believe we could see this stall back out, maybe around the 140 area um, over the next week or two. Uh, and then we could roll into some sort of a moderate upward trend, maybe to 155, 160, 165 up in this area. And then again, April roll back downward. April, May, June, roll back downward, I believe. So we're getting some good reflation trade here, lower uh, commodity costs, the lower uh, or, or more moderate deflationary trends, which is all good for a potential end of year uh, move to the upside. Consumer engagement, stalling back out again. <clears throat> wow, how did we know? Um, this is really consolidating. And I, you know, I've been telling you, we've got to get above this level and this purple level which if you extend it out over here, we've got to get above this level to see consumers really re-engage in the market. And I don't see that's going to happen until, you know, maybe 2024, uh, sometime late 2024, maybe as we get closer to the election and we see what's going on and kind of know what our opportunities are. Uh, but in presidential election year cycles, like we had in 2020, um, you can see this, uh, 2018, 2019, 2020 was a big, uh, this is 20, let's see, 14. So here was an election year cycle. 
14, 15, 16. Here was an election cycle in the 20, uh, 2020 time frame. This was also COVID <clears throat> right in this area. So we get into this flattening type of cycle right around election years. We've already seen a broad decline in consumer engagement. Um, we're moving into an 18 month election year cycle. I think this is gonna flatten back out for 15, 16, 17 months, and then eventually slowly move back into an engagement cycle around 2024, 2025. Uh, that means that we've got a lot of trading ahead of us to uh, be aware of what's taking place. The markets are not going to be easy for the next 18 months. You've got to be aware of that. Okay. Okay. The uh, valuation, uh, custom devaluation cycle index is still stalling out. Uh, this is an older chart from December. I need to recreate this. Uh, uh, but anyway, let's skip that right now. The large cap monthly index is building a little strength. I think, again, we're going to see this flatten out, maybe bias a little to the upside um, towards the end of the year. Large caps are, are going to do uh, fairly well overall, but they're not going to be stellar performances. We're not seeing this big rally phase yet. We're in kind of a, a phase like this right now, trying to base and bottom. Maybe we'll roll back up a little bit. Maybe we'll trade sideways for another eight uh nine, 10 months, but ideally we need to see this move back up into this area to start gaining some real strength. It's got to really get above this high right here, that little high I'm trying to point to. So be aware that we could see eight, 10, 12 months of sideways trending uh, with a moderate bullish bias in the large caps. Nothing stupendous, just uh, moderate upside trending. Global asset monthly, Kind of doing the same things needs to get out of its own way and again this is key this is going to require the consumer uh to get involved which again uh ties into real estate um the markets perform very well when real estate opportunities are there fred pressure is is mitigated and the economy is clicking along i don't think we're going to see that type of a scenario until after uh, 2024, really, somewhere around late 2024, maybe into 2025. So the next two years, 18 months, are going to be very consolidated uh, uh, for traders and very tricky for traders. I uh, need to understand there's still opportunity out there, ladies and gentlemen. The volatility is here, um, but you need to be aware that for the next 12 to 15 months, um, this is going to be very tricky um, and don't get married to a bullish position. Don't get married to a bearish position. You need to be able to stay dynamic and fluid with regards to market trends. So I expect this to kind of flatten out, maybe mo roll a little bit higher uh, over the next two or three months and then roll back downward, trying to set up a new base bottom by July and then maybe rolling a bit higher into the end of 2023 and early 2024. Gold cycle index, gold is accumulating. It's a beautiful setup, ladies and gentlemen. Watch my gold video this week. I uh, can't tell you how important this is uh, for the broader cycle of gold. We've just got to be aware that some global crisis event could, uh, could really shock gold, sending it maybe 8, 10, 12% lower. Um, but understand that this is a beautiful accumulation phase almost very similar to what we had back over here. You see, we sold off, bounced, sold back lower, held up in this area, and then finally transitioned into an accumulation phase. So here's our sell off all the way down. Here's our bounce. Here's our, our let's call it mitigation uh, of accumulation phase. And eventually we're gonna start to base and bottom. I think this is all gonna start to move very strongly to the upside. Uh, end of 2023 and throughout most of 2024, 2025, back up into this area. Then eventually 2027, 28, 29, it's going to really start to spike. Okay, Custom Innovation Index had a big re reflation rally. I really am concerned that we are seeing uh, too much uh, opportunity here in earnings. Granted, earnings for uh, technology and innovation are... Uh, going to continue to stay moderately strong, but they're going to continue to decline over time. Be very cautious above this 80, 85 area 
over here on this custom innovation index, we could very easily see a rollback, especially if my prediction uh, of an April peak and rollover in the markets takes place. So be aware that you may only have, from where we're at right now, uh, about a 11 or 12 percent, maybe 13 percent upside move in innovation in this index. That might equate to another 20, 25 percent in things like, you know, Tesla and uh, Microsoft and what have you. But eventually, I think we're going to see um, some more consolidation in the technology innovation sector before we actually find a bottom. Again, it ties into the presidential election year cycle. We're at the very beginning of a consolidation phase that's normally 18, 19, 20 months for a presidential election year cycle. I think this time with uh, Biden and who knows who else involved, I think it could be exaggerated. I think we could end up in a very volatile sideways type of a channel over the next 18 to 24 months. Okay, the custom fear index moved a little bit higher. You can see it was up 0.21 last week. This is a weekly chart, um, still low, but it's because of the rotation in the SPY here. This is the SPY. Uh, you can see the uh, sentiment index has moved back into moderate bullish trending, um, which is good. I mean, ideally, I think it's going to you know, roll back over and try to flatten out. That's where I really think we're at. We're going to get a little bit of a rollover, maybe back down just below this center line level. And then come March, we might see it move up a little bit higher, kind of like peaking in this area here, and then rolling back over in April, and we'll see some moderate downtrend, maybe down into these areas here. That'll be the April, May, June collapse. Then eventually we'll get the rollover to the upside uh, come July, August, September into kind of a Christmas rally, which may last into March, uh, you know, February, March 2024, then roll back over. So we're looking good. Uh, we're out of the fear, the massive fear cycle. Uh, we do have some volatility in place setting up over the next 10 days or so that I believe will resolve to the upside, possibly coming up to about this area or a little higher on the SPY. Then, and that's in the 435 area that I keep talking about, then we're going to roll into that deeper decline, which is going to have everybody freaked out, thinking the markets are tanking. Remember, they're not tanking. By my analysis, they're just setting up a, a complex wave C or wave three structure and will resolve back to the upside uh, as we move into later 2023 and into 2024. Next, the custom real estate cycles index back up into extreme hostility. And boy, does this set up a real potential for... Uh, for pricing to move broadly downward. You can see we've got this data here. This data normally lags by about a month or two, uh, but we've seen this rollover, seen this peak. The next phase is probably a 20 to 25% price decline. The inventory is stacking up. When I do the real estate video, I'll show you, but inventory is stacking up. Price declines are at about 150% of the market, uh, meaning everything is being, is being uh, lowered. Uh, but not by much. That's the trick. Okay, they're lowering by, you know, 500 or I saw one just the other day that was lowered by $100 trying to attract people. People are out there still trying to get the top price level they can for everything, even in foreclosures. But this extreme hostility means that we are moving downward. It's just a matter of time, folks. And when this moves downward, uh, now, this was COVID, so this is a, a very different cycle. But if you take a look at the mean level here, the mean level out here puts us around this 300 area. Um, and I believe if we were to eliminate these cycles and really trend, we'd be probably in the 280, 290 area uh, price-wise. That means that we have about a 26% downside move in prices that could take place uh, on an extended uh, downward cycle phase. Now, remember, the presidential election year cycle also comes into play here, okay? What's going to happen? We have potential new policies. We have potential new new uh, president, potential uh, changes in the House and the Senate. Um, this indecision settles into the market and could prompt a malaise, so to say, of consumer sentiment going forward 18, 19 months which could lead to a broad 
I don't want to call it a meltdown because it's not really a meltdown like we saw back here in 2008, 2009, but just say a broad decline in expectations until we have some clarity. Okay, the tech ratio index bouncing, stalling. Nice to see. This is a good indication that, you know, we're not seeing a lot of accumulation really in the tech ratio index. Um, we're not seeing these big, strong upward trends yet, especially here in February. Um, I think we're going to see this stall back out by the end of the year or end of the month, maybe back down into these lower areas. And then we'll see what happens with March, maybe a move up into this 30, 35, 37 area. And then we'll see that rollover and probably extend into sideways trending back down here into the, the 33, 0.33, 0 0.30, maybe point. Uh, somewhere in this area. So it's going to be sideways until July, possibly uh, June, July, August, in my opinion. Okay, U.S. to custom weekly indexes, as I mentioned to you, I think we could see a move, you know, up into this previous peak area. This is what I told you last week. This is the previous peak, and this is a previous peak area. We could see that move happen in March. That gives us an opportunity for about an 8, 9, 10% move in the U.S. markets. Potentially a, uh, do the math here real quick, uh, 20 to 25, 6 to 7% move, maybe 8% move in the global markets. But I think this is going to be our peak area right here in the global markets. And this will be our peak area in the U.S. markets for April. So understand that we have a, we have a decent little upside move here in March. But I think we're going to run into some real strong resistance back over here and uh, setting up a, a deeper decline, like I've been telling you. Custom valuations trend index. This is a monthly chart. This is telling you that uh, we are not seeing any valuation accumulation in the U.S. market. This February bar is black. We are still seeing downward trending. Uh, we are not going to see real price appreciation in the U.S. stock market until we get into a solid uptrend like we saw here or here. So as long as we continue to consolidate down here into these lower channels, basically we are going to be in a moderate bias trend, meaning no real explosive uh, moves. And that's, again, part of the presidential election year cycle. Remember, we had a presidential election year cycle here, 2019 and 20. Okay, that was a presidential election year cycle in COVID. We had another one back here in 2015-16. And you can see this was when the Fed was still prompting easy rates. But you can see we moved in here off of the election. We moved into this weakening into two, end of 2016 before the election and then continued to weaken until we found an actual base and accelerated. This was accumulation, folks. This was when the rally really started in the markets and once we see this upward trend on this chart again we can start to become a little bit more aggressive on an upward cycle trend we just don't have it it's not here yet we're still in a, a devaluation phase uh we're basing we're bottoming we're consolidating we're looking for that opportunity but we don't have it yet we still need to be cautious the custom leading index is rolling downward ladies and gentlemen we're up above this extreme again. I would not be surprised to see it back in this 180, uh, maybe 179 area on a deeper pullback, which would come again April, May, June. Right now, I think we stay up in this area, maybe bounce up into this 230, 240 area, and then fall back into this uh, 180, 190, 210 area. Um, and that would be the base bottom, I would assume, in June, July, somewhere over here in June, July, maybe somewhere back up here by the end of March, early April, and then we roll downward to set up the base. And again, this would be a, a very solid, you can almost see the, the cycle, A, B, then we do an A, B, C move here, rolling back down into this area, which would be perfect for a, uh, uh, a wave correction. And remember, this is more of a leading a weekly index, so this would be more reactive. You can see the trends setting up, but we could see, again, cycle rotation like this. This set up a higher high, higher than this area, but not higher than this area. So we have to see this play out. Elliott Wave still applies here, but remember, it's somewhat guesswork. Okay, volume ratio index. Volume is stalling out. 
Um, that means we're not seeing a lot of real uh, trend capitulation. Uh, that's very clear in the in the markets right now. Lots of volatility near the apex that's setting up. We will start to see some volume uh, probably in March, early March or, or very end of February. We might start to see some accumulation by retail traders and institutional traders trying to catch the next wave. Um, I'm here to warn you the next wave might be fairly short. So, you know, grab your five, six, seven percent, call it good. Uh, and don't chase it. Custom commodity to gold index, weakening again. Love this. This is exactly what the Fed wants to see. Ideally, we could see this even move you know, back down into this area come, you know, May, June, early July. And that would be an ideal deflationary cycle trend uh, for the Fed, possibly moving it into a pausing stage or maybe even an early weakening stage by maybe a quarter point or so uh, by the end of this year. We'll see. Uh, but this is all very good for the Fed. This is a deflationary cycle trend um, and we'll see how it plays out. Okay, metals trend index. Um, I've highlighted this before. Watch my gold and, and uh, uh, metals video I just created. Um, we are looking for a base, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking for a flagging formation to set up very similar to right here so you can see we've come off of this bottom rallied up went into the sideways flagging eventually resolved to the upside same scenario is going to set up over here in my opinion we're going to be looking at extended consolidation possibly until the end of 2024 where we may see some sort of accumulation like we saw right over here leading to an advancement higher and that's going to put gold up into the 22 to 2300 range, in my opinion. That'll probably come in 2024, 2025. Okay, the FANGS index moving higher. Um, saw some real weakness last week. Like I said, I don't know why uh, in trading view these things are all black, other than the fact that this is the real price. Um, but again, we've seen this kind of move back up into this area. I believe we're going to see FANGS move lower but remember that top is going to come in in early mid april and start to move downward so we could see a little bit more upside move here five six seven percent but eventually be prepared as soon as you get to april 1st april fool's day i want you to remember prepare for a contractionary phase in the market okay next bradley custom metals index i thought we went through this oh no this is the uh the regular metals chart. So this gives you an idea here where we're at. And again, it's very similar to what we had right here. Had kind of a base, rallied up. I doubt we're going to come back down into these areas, these back down here into these lows. I think we'll stay more so up in this area, um, above uh, like 1800 in gold, uh, maybe 1790. Uh, but understand that we are basically going to repeat this. I don't know how long it's going to repeat. It might be 10, 12, uh, you know, months or weeks, but it's going to sideways channel until we get into the breakout mode here. Uh, and that's what I believe is really going to happen as we move into this presidential election year cycle. Barring any crisis event, I believe that we are flagging out in gold. We're basically repeating this cycle. We've come back up, hit this peak, consolidated, flagged out, come back up, hit this peak, consolidated, rallied back up, and now I think we're going to do the same flagging formation here, eventually resolving to the upside, which may be, you know, closer to mid-2024. Maybe. We'll see how it plays out. Got lots of time to accumulate gold and silver. Custom Smart Cash Index, we went through this. I really think this peak up here is the next level we go to. In March, this next move here from 154 up to about 168 puts us at about an 8% rally. Um, this is what to expect the next last leg of the rally right here. Then we roll over in April, May, June, possibly coming back down into these areas, which would set up a complex uh, structure that I mentioned, leading to potentially a July, August, September rally phase, maybe back up into these areas over here. Next, we have the uh, Mint Rotational Modeling System. The Mint Rotational Modeling System is now 100% bullish. You can see here we're bullish on the SPY weekly. We're bullish on the SPY daily. 
Our last trigger was on February 3rd. We're off 1% on our current trigger. Uh, the system is doing very, very well. Uh, let's take a look here at our, our allocation levels. Nothing has changed since last week. We've pretty much been in a sideways channel. We have 50% allocation for stocks. Now remember, this, these are two separate accounts. One is your investment account. One is your trading account. Right now, we're talking about your trading account. Okay, the previous chart back here, this is your investment account. Your 401k and your IRA should be 100% allocated into bullish trending right now based on my rotational modeling system. Uh, and we will be rallying potentially higher over the longer term if this trend continues. In your trading account, which should be about 10 or 20%, the value of your uh, investment account is allocated as 50% stocks, 25% cash, 25% metals as a hedge, or 65% stocks, 35% cash, 0% bonds. Your trading account is allowing you to trade stocks efficiently using my signals or anybody else's signals that you're using. The purpose behind these two allocation models is to help you protect, manage, and grow your assets, okay? Next, we have the results of the uh, rotational modeling system. Nicely moving higher here. You can see that we're back up to near all-time highs over here. We just need a little bit of a move back to the upside, and uh, we could see all new all-time highs with the Mint rotational modeling system. This is the quarterly performance, been holding up quite well. Uh, and again, this is the annual performance. You can see here we've had only really one uh, deep losing year 2011 we could be looking at something like this maybe in 2024 moving into a presidential election year cycle uh, remember this was an election year 2027 28 and then we had uh, an election year going into 11 and 12 then we had an election year going into 15 16 then we had an election year going into 1920 and now we're looking at election year in uh, 2023 and 2024. So again, we could we could see some volatility here. I doubt we'll see this kind of a, a deep downside move, but you never know. I mean, I can't predict what's going to happen out that far. What I can tell you is that we are likely going to see some choppiness in the markets going forward. Okay, valuation or U.S. stock market index. We've broken out of this flag. You can see moving higher. The next phase is probably going to be right up in this area, right across this Fibonacci price amplitude arc. I think this is, we may get a little bit above it, but then I think we get that consolidation all the way into April, May, June, back down over here, back off of possibly this support channel or this lower support channel, and then we get to move higher. So again, nothing's changing with my analysis. I'm just reiterating what I've been telling you for the last three, four weeks, but uh it's playing out just like I called. Valuations trend index, I think we've gone through quite a bit of these, but again, working lower. We need to see this continue to consolidate and stay in this lower channel. This will give the Fed reason to move into a pausing or stalling formation uh, near the end of this year, maybe the middle of this year. The Fed does not want to break the markets. It just wants to see a, uh, a revaluation of price equilibrium. So it is uh, working very hard to accomplish that without breaking anything. And lastly, the volatility index. The volatility index did exactly what I told you. After we broke out of this channel, we saw a bit of an upside move. Now we're consolidating back here to the downside. What I believe is gonna happen, ladies and gentlemen, is we're gonna see another bout of consolidation around this 9, 10, maybe 11 area this next week. Then we may move back into a, uh, an upside move uh, into March, early March, uh, possibly back up into this 11, 12, 13 area, maybe even getting up here into 14 before we peak uh, in March. That would be a very early indication. Then we're going to roll back downward, possibly getting back down here into this 7, 8, 9 area uh, on the selling that takes place in April, May, June possibly even getting back down into these lower six, seven, eight areas. <clears throat> now, typically below six is very concerning, okay? Below six could indicate a big, broad downward uh, trend. 
but if we stay up in this eight area and we stay out of this channel, uh, meaning eight, eight and a half, nine, ten, 10, uh, while we're moving to the downside, uh, this is going to be considered okay. It's a pullback and an uptrend. <clears throat> if we see anything move down below six, six and a half, we have to start getting very concerned <clears throat> that we could slip into a bigger, broader downtrend. Uh, and uh, again, we'll play it by ear, see what happens. But right now, next week or two, we're going to just pretty much stay consolidated in this 9, 10, 11 range. And then we're going to start to see in early March an upward cycle, maybe up in 11, 12, 13, 14. Then come early April, we are going to roll back to the downside and we'll see how that plays out. Okay, now I've gone almost 45 minutes. Remember, my goal is here to help you trade. And I want you to be aware that there's new resources being available, made available to traders and members at Ment.com. I'm trying to help you become a better trader. I'm trying to teach you to trade the most optimum trade signals on an intraday, daily, weekly, or monthly basis. You do not need to be, you know, trading 20 or 30 or 50 symbols every week. I mean, really, you can stick with one or two, maybe three and maybe two to four trades per week. You just gotta learn to wait for the right setups and really take advantage of that the opportunities that set up every week. Almost guaranteed every week, there's gonna be some big trend that sets up. Like look at this one. We had this beautiful inside breakaway pattern on the SPY cycle patterns. And look at this big deep downside move. Um, beautiful trending. We had a great trend signal here to sell. We stayed in the sell mode all the way back down here. Remember, we were selling up here at 412. We bought back over here at 405. Uh, you know, doing the math real quick, that's what a nine, eight and a half, nine dollar swing over a 24 hour period in the SBY. The, the cycle trends confirmed. We had the sell signal here. <clears throat> we needed to wait for confirmation until over here. That put us confirmation right here. Still around 411. We had this deep downward cycle trend with standard deviation channel. We moved into bearish trending cycles here. Beautiful cycle trend all the way down and finally got us out. If you waited for confirmation, this is a buy signal here off this triple MACD structure or system. But if you waited for confirmation, it came back over here at about 4.05 uh, and three quarters. So really from 4.11 to 4.06, uh, that puts us at about a $5.00. Uh, five and a half dollar, six dollar profit um, off of a very simple trend. And then a lot of short term traders caught this bottom here and caught a nice little one, one and a half point move at the end of the day on Friday. But come visit Ment.com, learn what I do, learn how I can help you. And if you really find that I'm useful in helping you make money and learn to become a better trader, then join Expert Growth, become a member, support my research so I can keep doing this. And uh, let's build a great community of traders that support everybody and learn to become better traders. Remember, you know, you can do what other traders are doing right now. And that is you can learn to spot the market trends just like these guys. You know, I've got Nora as a member. Verde is probably going to become a member. He's been following me for two months. These guys are telling me my analysis is just simply incredible. You know, impressive. And last week was spot on. Uh, even the base rally prediction on Friday, this was January 23rd, about a month ago. Um, if you're not following what I'm doing, come check it out. Because the reality is I'm doing things that most people can't even imagine doing. I am predicting what is going to happen days, weeks, months, even years in advance. Uh, and it is coming true for the most part. Now I update them as I go. I try to stay very fluid in my analysis, but understand that, you know, I am trying to help you learn to become a better trader and to learn to do this on your own. End result is I don't really want to handhold you every day. I want to be busy digging and researching and finding new solutions for you. I want you guys to figure out how to become better traders, which is why I created this to help you use a price structure as I see it. Heiken Ashi is a momentum system very similar to Kagi and Renko and Japanese candlesticks. Heiken Ashi, believe it or not, is a Japanese candlestick term. I believe Heiken is the, the creator's name and Ashi is a 
is part of the Japanese candlestick names. The Japanese, the real name for Japanese candlesticks in Japanese is Nahaba Ashi. So the Ashi in Haiken Ashi refers to candles or footprints. Candles then provide even more detail. Haiken Ashi is an interpreted price data, so you can't use it as real price data. You need to follow Japanese candlesticks or price bars as real price data. Then basically we use Fibonacci price theory, higher highs, higher lows, which is Donchian, highest high and highest low or lowest low is Donchian. Uh, and then I use this cycle analysis here, which is very, very handy to be able to identify where we're getting crosses. So you can see here we had a cross to the downside, we had a cross to the upside, we had a, a deep cross to the downside here, and then we rolled higher here. Combining all of this gives you a fairly clear picture of what's going on and gives you an idea of trending. Then we just apply Fibonacci and Fibonacci price theory to the charts, and it makes it fairly simple. It really does. Okay, guys, that's it for now. Remember, visit Mint.com. Come in here. Join the Expert Growth membership page. Uh, get all of my access and research and analysis under one low price. And let's make the next five, six, ten years as profitable as possible. While you're at it, come over here and check out my fully automated systems. If you have not seen, like for example, Symphony, if you have not seen the capabilities of this, this is an eMicro Symphony portfolio. Symphony is a very inexpensive product. Um, it it you start with about seven to ten thousand dollars. It trades futures. It's very slow, very uh, dedicated in what it does. But again, if you have not considered fully automated growth, um, I want you to stop and consider what $1,000 a month compounded on a $10,000 account would actually do if you were able to grow the actual money that's traded. So this is trading one contract of each of these, okay? If you were to start with $10,000 hypothetically and were able to over the first year make $12,000, which it shows you right here, about $12,000, you would have made 120% return on investment for just letting the computer do its thing for you. Now, imagine next year you went to two contracts and you made 24,000. So now you've taken 10,000, turned it in the first year into uh, 22,000, turned that 22,000 into 55,000, and then next year you trade four. And you trade that 55,000, turn it into 100,000. So you've taken 10 grand and grown it into 100 grand. Actually, you'd be more than that if I do the math right. You'd be a little more than that if you compounded every quarter based on returns, leaving a proper cash reserve, you could, over the course of five or six years, turn a $10,000 account into a half million dollar account just by letting Symphony do its thing for you. Completely hands-free. You don't have to touch it. It just sets up and runs. So again, if you want to learn how proprietary automated systems work, come talk to me. Okay, Da Vinci is even more incredible. Da Vinci is a range based or reversion trading system. We have multiples. We have many different strategies. We normally custom develop solutions, meaning package strategies together for members. But I'm going to tell you right now, this Symphony package is the bomb, in my opinion. If you are into automated trading and you want to get started, this is slow, simple, very low risk. It does not require a lot of brain power to do this. This takes one or two trades a month on average. That's it. And most of the time you're sitting with cash. But the results are incredible, especially if you understand how to compound it on a quarterly basis. I'll show you. I'll do another video on it to help you out. Anyway, come to Mint.com. See what's going on. See how we can help you and learn to become a better trader. Okay, guys, talk to you soon.